Hello all. After two months of productive testing of the version 3 crank charger, I'm ready to do part 3 of the video series. This is the OEM chassis starting battery that come with the vehicle. It has gone through about a handful of drainage that require jump start. So uh, in order for me to solve this problem, that's the reason I decided to come up, uh, come up with the crank charger. Uh, first of all, let's check the battery. This battery is uh, still good. It's 12.7 volt after sitting in the garage for a couple of months. So version 3 of the crank charger is very simple. Uh, all we need is a circuit breaker, a 5 amp circuit breaker. is an automatic reset. A 0.25 ohm 24, 25 watt resistor. And also a dial, a 20 amp dial. By the way, this uh, resistor sometimes uh, is difficult to find. So 0.22 or 0.25 ohm is fine and if you want to go with a 50 watt that's okay too so the design is very simple uh, just have one wire going into the solar controller uh, low port so this is the low port the positive and the negative so just one wire go into the positive and then go through the circuit and then you would need a 14 gauge wire or thicker and then a uh, fuse that go into the battery so that's all that is let me repeat a wire go to the positive side of the solar controller low port into a 5 amp circuit breaker a uh, 0.25 ohm resistor and a 20 amp uh, diode and that's all you need 14 gauge of thicker wire and then a fuse near the battery to uh, protect in case there's a short and the solar controller has four parameters we need to configure the low voltage connect voltage under voltage warning, reconnect voltage, and a low voltage disconnect voltage. And if you research what the meaning of this, this is actually for controlling the low port. And some controller has two low port, but ours only have one low port. So this is actually the reconnect low and disconnect low one and two uh, since we only have one low port so one and two are setting the same so we want to disconnect at 12.9 volt and reconnect at 13.2 volt and this is the positive of the low port and this is a working model uh, very easy to do if you take a look, this is the low port input. So the input would go to the auto reset circuit breaker and the auto reset circuit breaker will go to the resistor. The resistor would go to a diode and then the diode will come out to the chassis battery. And uh, this is the whole design. Extremely simple, uh, fully protected because the controller have short circuit protection and overload protection. And the the circuit breaker auto reset circuit breaker also could provide surge protection and then this uh, 20 amp fuse would protect sorry so the 20 amp fuse would protect 
uh, potential shortage of the wire near the battery area and let's take a look at the charging condition right now so this is the MT50 the middle column is the charge side right now because the Eagle tracks are off so this is 13.7 volt is the voltage of the kicker battery and uh, at 0 amp so it's not charging the kicker battery because it's very full and this is the low port the low port is charging at 13.6 volt and 0.2.3 amps so this is compensating for the parasitic uh, loss typically the parasitic loss is about 0.1 amp is about 0.1 amp because I just opened the door and I uh, use some electricity for the rear door light uh, this light it needs to be replenished so right now is at 0.3 amps so I already have another version connected in the vehicle and let me show you what that is this is the one that I uh, connected to the vehicle and I could check the voltage now and the voltage of my chassis starting battery is 13.3 volt so this is a switch just to check the voltage it doesn't stop the uh, the crank charger from functioning so this is 13.3 volt and by the way this design is basically this plus the voltmeter so I incorporated the voltmeter with a switch and this into my final design uh, the next test I want to do is to turn on the accessory and turn on the radio and see what kind of uh, current is being drawn by the radio and the accessory so right now the vehicle is turned on but not started yet and I'm waiting for the Sony radio to come on and okay so the radio is on let's go to take a look at the charge current to the chassis battery okay the current is now at 2.2 amps 2.2 amps so uh, you can assume that the accessory and the radio draws about 2 amps however if you have the daylight uh, daytime running light on uh, it will add another 3 amps to it so roughly you should see about 5 amps if you have a uh, daylight running light on so this is uh, part one of the test to show you the crank charger is working uh, con continuously and dynamically. Let me shut off the engine. So the next test is uh, I'm going to do a uh, battery starting test. That means I'm going to start the uh, engine. okay it's uh still 2.2 amp it's coming down 2.1 amp anyway it's uh it should come down to about 0.3 okay 2 amp it should come down to about 0.3 amp later on and let's check the uh voltage of the battery okay the battery is now 12.6 volt 12.6 volt and the next test I'm going to do a remote start I hope that we could catch the uh, surge current so let's keep an eye on this readout and see if we could catch the surge current when we start the engine okay 4 amp seems to be the surge current uh, when the engine is starting and now instead of a float voltage for the solar 
uh, the solar jumped to 13.9 which is the boost uh, voltage which is the boost voltage and we could check the uh, chassis battery voltage again now is 14.4 volt which is the voltage of the alternator uh, the chassis alternator charging voltage it's now 14.4 14.5 14.4 so uh, this is it I hope you uh, see the value of the crank charger and I've been using it for two straight months been extremely satisfied with it and it's also uh, very inexpensive and low cost I will put together a uh, PDF file to document uh, the testings and uh, the detailed result. Good day. Thank you all.